Russia engaged in intense battles with Ukrainian soldiers in northeastern Ukraine on Monday, advancing a ground offensive that opened a new front and exerted additional pressure on the already stretched Ukrainian forces. Russian troops pounded over 30 towns and villages in Ukraine's Kharkiv region, forcing nearly 6,000 to evacuate. The offensive has led to significant tactical gains for Russia according to Ukraine's general staff. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky emphasized the critical situation in the Kharkiv region, highlighting that defensive battles are ongoing, with intense fighting occurring across much of the border area. Special attention is paid to the Kharkiv region. Defensive battles are ongoing, fierce battles on a large part of our border area. There are villages that have actually turned from a gray zone into a combat zone, and the occupier is trying to gain a foothold in some of them, or simply use some of them for further advancement. The Russian Defense Ministry claimed that their troops improved their tactical positions and inflicted heavy losses on Ukrainian forces around border villages, including Lipsy and the town of Vovchansk. Impact of the Russian troops' attacks have pushed Ukrainian authorities into a tizzy with officials conceding to Russian advances. Now the Russians are erasing Vopchansk from the face of the earth and are using the scorched earth method. That is, they are trying to burn the territory in front of them. Then the infantry comes in and they always advance like that. Likewise, this is Bakhmut, this is Marienka, this is Avdiivka. The same is happening now in Vopchansk. Thousands of civilians have fled Russia's renewed ground offensive in northeastern Ukraine, where towns and villages have been subjected to intense artillery and mortar fire, officials reported on Sunday. They shoot very hard, a lot there. Everything is on fire. I am scared for my children. The fierce battles have compelled at least one Ukrainian unit to withdraw in the Kharkiv region ceding more territory to Russian forces in the sparsely defended grey zone along the border. Kharkiv Regional Governor Oleg Sinegubov reported that over the last day, more than 30 towns and villages were struck by enemy artillery and mortar attacks, wounding at least nine people. Some areas were also bombed by Russian aircraft. A total of 5,762 people have been evacuated since the offensive began. On Sunday, Russia carried out 22 assaults in five border areas, with 14 still ongoing, according to Ukraine's general staff. The general staff reported ongoing fighting for the border town of Vovchansk, where Russia has deployed significant forces numbering up to five battalions. Vovchansk, previously home to 2,500 residents, now has only 200, 300 remaining. The town suffered massive shelling on Sunday, wounding seven people. A 69-year-old man was injured by detonating ammunition in Izium, and a woman was wounded in a village near Kupiansk. The city of Kharkiv itself 
has not been struck in the last 24 hours. Fierce clashes continue in the Kharkiv region. The Russian Defense Ministry reported maintaining advantageous positions along the front lines and destroying multiple Ukrainian targets, including rocket launcher and air defense systems in Vovchansk. Russian forces repelled Ukrainian offensives from various directions, with air defense units downing a Ukrainian Sukhoi Su-27 attack aircraft and intercepting multiple missiles, aerial bombs and drones. The Ukrainian armed forces reported over a hundred battles in the frontline area, targeting Russian electronic warfare systems, command posts and ammunition depots. They also shot down a Russian Sukhoi Su-25 attack aircraft. President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that Ukrainian forces are reinforcing their presence in Kharkiv and launching counter-offensives. Our task is obvious. We need to inflict as many losses as possible on the occupier, in particular on the outskirts of Vatchans. The situation is extremely difficult. The city is under constant Russian fire, and our military is carrying out counterattacks, helping local residents. Ukrainian media reported that Mykhailo Drapati has been appointed as the new commander of the Operational Tactical Grouping of Troops, OTGT, Kharkiv, replacing Yuri Galushkin. Drapatai remains the deputy chief of the general staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan stated that the U.S. is working to accelerate the tempo of deliveries to Ukraine. He acknowledged that the recent congressional funding delay had disadvantaged Ukraine and emphasized that efforts are underway to rectify the situation as swiftly as possible. But what you will see is a steady flow week by week, it's not like we've got to wait well out into the future before stuff starts getting delivered. And we are going to have another, what we call PDA, Presidential Drawdown Authority package, just in the coming days, because we're trying to really accelerate the tempo of the deliveries, recognizing, as I said before, uh, the delay put Ukraine in a hole, and we're trying to help them dig out of that hole as rapidly as possible. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is visiting Kyiv in an unannounced diplomatic mission to reassure Ukraine of American support as it defends against increasingly intense Russian attacks. The visit comes less than a month after Congress approved a long-delayed foreign assistance package allocating a $400 million package of military aid for Ukraine as they struggle to hold off Russian advances in the northeast Kharkiv region. Much of this aid will go toward replenishing depleted artillery and air defense systems. The president signed another $400 million drawdown package for Ukraine, which includes additional artillery ammunition, air defense interceptors, and anti-aircraft missiles, armored vehicles, artillery rounds, javelin and anti-armor systems, and other equipment needed to defend Kharkiv and other areas that are under threat. On his fourth trip to Kyiv, since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, Blinken will emphasize the Biden administration's commitment to Ukraine's defense and long-term security, U.S. officials said. Blinken aims to send a strong signal of reassurance to Ukrainian leaders and civil society figures during his two-day visit, said the official, who spoke on condition of anonymity ahead of Blinken's meetings. In a statement released after Blinken's arrival, the State Department said he would meet with President Volodymyr Zelensky and other top Ukrainian officials to discuss battlefield updates, the impact of new US security and economic assistance, long-term security commitments, and ongoing efforts to bolster Ukraine's economic recovery. Delays in U.S. assistance, particularly since Israel's conflict with Hamas began to preoccupy top administration officials, have raised deep concerns in Kyiv and Europe. Blinken, for example, has visited the Middle East seven times since the Gaza conflict began in October. His last trip to Kyiv was in September. 
the U.S. official added that Blinken would give a speech later on Tuesday extolling Ukraine's strategic successes in the war. This speech is intended to complement a previous address Blinken made in Helsinki, Finland, where he criticized Russian President Vladimir Putin for Moscow's strategic failures in launching the war. Since Blinken's Helsinki speech, Russia has intensified its attacks, especially as the U.S. House delayed action on the aid package, suspending most U.S. assistance. These attacks have increased in recent weeks as Russia seeks to exploit Ukrainian shortages in manpower and weapons while new assistance is in transit. The Kremlin's forces aim to exploit Ukrainian weaknesses before a substantial batch of new military aid from the US and European partners arrives on the battlefield in the coming weeks and months, according to Ukrainian commanders and analysts. They say this period is a window of opportunity for Moscow and one of the most dangerous for Kyiv in the two-year war. With the West supporting Ukraine, tensions have escalated between Russia and the West. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov issued a warning stating that if the West chooses to engage in battle for Ukraine, Russia is prepared to meet them on the battlefield. It's their right. If they want it to be on the battlefield, it will be on the battlefield, he added. Russia has escalated warnings about the risks of a direct confrontation with NATO. This follows French President Emmanuel Macron's refusal to rule out the possibility of Western troops being sent to Ukraine. The Kremlin recently warned that deploying NATO troops to Ukraine would be extremely dangerous, with President Vladimir Putin cautioning that such a move could lead to World War III 